Hey folks, Scott Weingart here for the MCRIP Podcast. Today, I wanted to discuss two items uh, that I have been thinking about for our COVID-19 patients. The COVID intubation pack, which contains all the items you will need to do the intubation that aren't already in the rooms, aside from intubation medications, a video laryngoscope, and a non-invasive mask that is non-vented. You'll see what I'm talking about in the video shortly. The other thing we'll talk about is the safest way I have come up with to pre-oxygenate a patient with high FiO2 and, if you need it, CPAP without putting staff at risk. In fact, this is, to my mind, the safest pre-oxygenation that can be done, uh, safer in my mind than a non-rebreather mask at high flow, uh, and safer than a nasal cannula. So take a look, and then please go to MCRIT and tell me what you think. Peer review it. Tell me if I am flawed in some way. I would love to hear your thoughts, because we are all working on the cutting edge of evidence. This is all based on knowledge of previous events and knowledge of the systems we're going to be using. All right, let's get to it. Intubation. So here's the COVID pack. What you're going to need is one of these packs that's pre-made. You're going to need a properly sized non-invasive mask with the blue adapter, meaning there is no vent. So these are for our Bellas, which are over there, not for the hospital's open circuit uh, BiPAP machines. But we're not going to be using them with a BiPAP machine. I'll teach you what we're doing. You also need a CMAC or a Glidescope and medications. And everything else should already be in whatever room you're in in the EBIC. So I'm going to run you through the pack. Now what you're going to do outside the room, if you have a moment, is you're going to take your viral filter, it will be in a package, this one happens to be open for this demonstration, and you're going to attach it to the non-invasive mask. And you're going to get your nasal cannula out, and you're going to do both of these things before you go into the room. And we'll tell you in just a second why we're doing these things out before you go in the room, but hold that thought. So those are two of the items in there. Now the rest of the stuff is, it's either gonna be a full face shield or a hood, depending on the availability. A BVM, and the mask for the BVM, but we're not gonna put that on because we're not gonna be using that, hopefully. You're gonna have your end tidal CO2 adapter, your end tidal CO2 tubing, are flexible tip bougies and a tube holder. These are the items you need that aren't already in the room. All right, so we've now entered the room. We are in full PPE. It should be bunny suit, N95, surgical mask over the N95, some form of eye protection, preferably full face visor or hood and double gloves. We're just for the purpose of this demonstration not going to be doing that. And the reason we took these three items out ahead of time is the first thing we're going to do before we set up for our intubation is we're going to get the nasal cannula on and we're going to do that. It doesn't need to be on oxygen. In fact, it's preferable for it not to be right now. And then we're going to cover the patient with the non-invasive mask and the viral filter already firmly attached to it because as soon as that goes on, the only exhalation that's going to hit you is what's going to be leaking out of the side of the mask. And once this is on, we are a lot safer. All right, that was pretty good. Now, there's a little resistance to this, um, but can you breathe okay, Pemba? Yeah, that's a little bit different. All right, we're gonna make that feel a lot easier in just a sec. Now, for the pre-oxidation portion, we have a BBM with a P-valve, and the P-valve is at zero, and we already have pre-applied the end tidal CO2 stem. And we're gonna firmly attach that and we're gonna put that up to 25 flush rate because the flush on a BBM has nothing to do with anything that goes on at the mask. The only time he's accessing the oxygen is when he takes a spontaneous breath. Now, if we wanted peak because the sats are not good at pre-oxygenation, we're gonna put the nasal cannula up to four 
And you can't quite hear it, but he is already powering this peep valve. Now, this is only generating anything to the air that's not being virally filtered if there's a leak around the mask, which right now I'm not feeling any. And his spontaneous breathing is going to pull the mask into his face. There's less potential of aerosol than, than a non root breather and the same potential as a low flow nasal cannula. So this is the setup we want for pre oxygenation I think it's safest for the providers. It's the best situation to provide CPAP and 100% or close to it FiO2 because that's what these BDMs provide so long as they have a peep valve on. The peep valve is there both for peep but also even when it's at zero, it prevents any room hair inhalation and therefore forces it to come from the reservoir and the bag to provide a high FiO2. It's protecting the staff. The only thing coming into the room is non-high flow leak around the mask if there is any. On Pendle's face, there's not. We have two mask sizes. Pendle is a medium. Take a look at your patient. If their face is really big, grab a large. All right, folks, so let me know what you think at mcrit.org. I have a whole bunch more airway and intubation resources for COVID-19. These views do not represent the views of my hospital, of Janus General, or any organization. They are solely the views of me. And if you want to do any of this, you need to vet it with your local system to make sure they think it's clever too. Scott Weingart, MCRIT Podcast, saying bye-bye.